Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Hey, first I want to start off and just say I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate the fact that you show up every day and we have this little group. You know, it's not like a massive group, but this is pretty great, right? We all get to hang out. We must be like the last remnants of the truth community on YouTube. It feels like sometimes, doesn't it? And I appreciate that this show has grown over the last couple years. And to show my appreciation... I, I didn't used to have like a personal Facebook because something happened. Basically, um, I transformed my personal Facebook years and years and years ago into what they call a business account. So I did not have really a personal Facebook page. I could see it on my end, but it was pretty much disappeared from the platform because it was transformed into the business account, which then became enter the 5T4RZ uh, Facebook page. Okay. And Many of you, uh, you know, remember that Facebook page. It's still up, but I don't really promote it. Then we got into, then we created a Facebook group, which is Enter the Stars. But um, I, for some reason, Facebook came back around and said, look, you can't have groups or pages that are not attached to a personal account. So basically, I had to go in and create a personal account and, you know, and what it did is it linked back to my old Facebook uh, page or my old Facebook personal account. And it brought all the pictures over from that. So that's there. I linked it here in the pinned comment. The link's right up here, as you can see on your screen right there. And um, so what will happen is if you go on there, I'm going to leave this open for about 24 hours because I forgot how Facebook works. And I opened it, I opened it up for friends to request just general people to the public and i had like thousands of people from like africa and malaysia people obviously were they were spammers right and i forgot how that works so i was like oh no i can't just allow this to be open like this i'll drive myself nuts trying to figure out who's real and who's not so i am going to open it up just for about 24 hours for those of you that want to put a face to a name to my personal facebook page and then hopefully when, once I close that again, there'll be enough people that know other people that will be able to friend request through friends of friends, I think is the way it works. So the link's there if you guys want to do it. I want to thank the channel member too that just uh, signed up for the channel membership, Shay Watson. I really appreciate it. And do me a favor, when you friend request me through this link right here, when you do that, um, just make sure that you just send me a quick note and mention the youtube channel that way i'll know that you're real because what happens the spammers get on there and they pretty much they just say hi don't do that just say hey casey um enter the stars thanks for adding me as a friend or something and then i'll i'll approve it so that'll be cool so you guys can come over there put a name to a face you know i've been in this community for what has it been 10 years now and it's crazy because a lot of YouTube channels are really very, very private about about their life. You know, I would say about half the YouTube channels, you don't even know who the person really is. You know, um, now they have their reasons for that, of course. Uh, and I don't blame people for doing that. But <clears throat> for me personally, I like to, I've always been transparent about who I am. Okay. I, every once in a while, I'll get someone that comes on and say, Hey, are you even real? We've never seen your face. I'm like, all you got to do is go back and look on the channel. We went live several times back when I was in France. Um, that's me, you know, and or some people will say, oh, you're not black. You don't sound black. And I'm go go back and look at the videos. I mean, are we going to get into a debate about the level of blackness somebody has to be to be called black? I don't think we should be getting into that debate. So anyway, um, you know, so. This will just help you put a name to a face. And sometimes, you know, the, the trolls can gain traction by planting that little seed in your mind that someone is somehow a government agent or a shill or all these things. And <clears throat> all that gets put to rest when you see, you know, a person's entire life, which is what you'll see on my Facebook page. You'll see pictures of my mother, my sister, all my family, where I'm from. It's all there for those who have questions. And then that will help us refocus on the work. Instead of wondering if someone's being a shill or shilling, um, you can focus on, you know, the work that we're presenting here. And that's the way it should be, you know, complete, 
transparency transparency right so let's get into today's show between the headlines now of course everybody's still talking about the big headline right which is the school scrutiny and we're going to avoid this topic on this show for now on this channel um that may change in the future but I just feel like these things are honey traps. A lot of people are calling it Handy Sook 2.0. Um, you know, and it's probably the case. Uh, people are still de debating to this day the authenticity of did somebody die or did they not with Handy Sook, which to me completely misses the point. The fact is that they lied to us and that they used the lie in whatever shape or form to manipulate us, to drag us into you know wars uh to you know impose legislation for pop sticks and the list goes on and on and on the focus should be the lie because the minute you say you know nobody died if you start saying that you're essentially letting people off the hook because they're covered under the ndaa act they're covered they're allowed legally to use propaganda so if you say in over and over again that every single one of these is fake and nobody died you're essentially letting them off the hook whereas my my viewpoint is that sometimes people die and sometimes they don't it all depends on what they want to do you know so th those are my my feelings on all of that and so that we can kind of move forward from that. Now, there's plenty of channels. I, I'm not criticizing the channels that are covering the scrutiny. Um, there's plenty of places to go for that. But that's why we're called the body of Christ, right? Some of us do one thing. Some of us do the other. I just don't want you to feel like you come here to be distracted. Because the, that those accusations start flying as well. You know, so we're here to focus on, you know, the path that the Holy Spirit has led for us and other people have maybe a different path that the Holy Spirit is leading them to cover. So let's get into this top story for today, because this fits in to exactly what we've been talking about for at least. Let's see, when did we discover this baldness phenomenon that's been going on, this alopecia phenomenon? Um, I guess that's been since will smith i don't think we did anything before that but when we saw the whole you know will smith getting slapped by chris rock and of course will smith's wife jada pinkett being having alopecia that's kind of when we dug into this whole baldness aspect and we realized that there was something to this that all of this was happening for a reason and that they were promoting something inadvertently underhandedly when that event happened we're going to cover two studies today that pretty much uh posted or published at the end of 2021 beginning of 2022 and both of these studies they admit that the smack scene can cause alopecia or baldness now what woman do you know or what man do you know if they knew this and saw the study would be running in to get a smack the nation not too many people that i know Not too many people that I know would do this because most people are trying to hold on to their hair, aren't they? So now you're starting to see the big picture. That Jada Pinkett Smith and that whole thing was one big promo. It was always about the baldness. The shearing of the sheep. And they knew it was happening and they couldn't let a good crisis go to waste. So they scripted this whole thing, this slapping ritual and... Really, it was an inadvertent way to promote baldness as normal, as something all women struggle with, and all men too. And, hey, all you got to do is get our product, our medication, and you're just going to be just fine. So, they did their little I Am Legend, bald zombie apocalypse, bald Jada Pinkett Smith promo, so that they could capitalize on the alopecia drug sales that they knew would be flooding in. Wow, right? Let's take a look at these studies. Now, I'm not saying this. This is what the studies say. In case anyone's reviewing this video. So, let's take a look at this. It says here, alopecia after the smack the nation. Right there in black and white. Short and to the point. This particular article. Let's see when this released. This was February 2022. It says alopecia is a T-lymphatic 
lymphocyte a mediated autoimmune condition characterized by hair loss due to the infl inflammatory response targeting the hair follicle. Recent reports have suggested that VIDCO-19 might be a trigger. But then they also go down here and explain that it's also about the smack the nation as the title just described. Now, before we get into these case studies, understand that when we dug deep enough, we found that this whole baldness ritual went all the way back to ancient Rome. It went all the way back to Artemis and how Artemis was found under a willow tree. Willow Smith? She was found under a willow tree. Willow Smith, by the way, shaves her head. And who was Artemis found with under the willow tree? One of two brothers named Alopecus. Spelled almost the exact same way as the condition alopecia. So, do you think there was something to this? I think there was. Now, willow trees have always been synonymous with hair. Because they look like a hairy head. And so, all of this goes back to these ancient rituals. Now, who was Artemis? Artemis was the twin sister of Apollo. And we told you that Apollo brings disease and he cures it. The cure is the disease. The disease is the cure. They're one and the same. So, it appears as though we were right. There has been some kind of outbreak of people losing hair after they get the smack scene. Now they're saying also that you can lose your hair when you get VIDCO-19. Let's look at these case studies here. I'll make sure you guys are with me and we'll continue on here. I'm trying to pick up the pace on my videos because some people complain that I talk too slow. You can all, you know, if you feel like I'm talking too slow, you can go right here and you can change the uh, settings to make it go at 1.25 speed. Anytime I'm reviewing my own live shows, I'll put it at 1.25 speed because even when I listen to my videos back, it seems kind of slow. But, you know, we're always our worst critic, right? Let's read this case study here. A 33-year-old woman with hepatic in the setting of chronic hepatitis B presented for hair loss. The patient's brother had a history of AA. She completed the modern smack scene series she presented with large patches of non-scarring alopecia now there's people here on youtube someone sent me a link there are people here on youtube and there's tiktok videos of people showing this hair loss after the smack the nation i'm not going to play them here because you know they could say oh that's misinformation right but here i'm just reading this study it says the patient received four treatments of blah, 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 cream. And on follow-up examination, decreased hair loss and increased regrowth were noted. Oh, so, you know, they just sell you another medication. Who knows what the long-term effects of that are. There's another case study. Again, this was the fizzer. They, this, these people got the fizzer. So they're all causing it or can cause it. Got to get fair balance. Doesn't mean that everybody that gets the smack the nation is going to go bald, but it's creating a condition where the, the possibilities are there. So, again, all of these got this smack the nation and they started growing. I'm not going to read through all these, these case studies, but as you can see, it's a real thing. So, I know in the beginning, people thought it was silly that we were talking about sheep and being sheared and silence of the lambs when a sheep is sheared and, you know, the spiritual connection to God. It sounded silly, didn't it? Until now. Because it's true. Here's another study. This one was January. Oh, this looks like January 2022. Again. Let's read it. Let's just read the abstract on this one. Vidco CV19 smack scenes are authorized for use in numerous countries worldwide. Several cutaneous findings are reported after severe acute blah blah blah. Here we report the case of a patient with rapid onset of alopecia. Can you imagine this? You get your smack the nation and all of a sudden you wake up and you're starting to feel like Gollum. You know your hair's thinning. And you're like, what am I going to do now? You don't know what's causing it because the, the media is not talking about this, are they? You got to dig and dig and dig and find one of two studies that talks about this. 
to figure out what's even going on with you. Freaking out, going, what, what am I going to do now? What's causing this? Now, again, I repeat, who in their right mind would go stand in line to get something that could cause this? Um, I guess people do. But mostly it's because they're not informed. They don't know about this until they've already got it, right? That's when they start digging. Because up to that point, they watch a Enter the Stars video and they go, that guy's crazy. There's no such, there, there's no baldness until it happens to them. And then they go and they go, oh, oh man, what do I do now? But it's too late. It's already in you. So it, this is about the auto, this is an autoimmune thing. It is what they're saying here in this study. Um, among the many cutaneous adverse effects reported by the Smack the Nation, no episodes of alopecia had been described to date. Oh, that well, you know, when you're dealing with uh, how things get reported and what constitutes a report and if it even makes it into the documentation, uh, it's no wonder that no episodes of alopecia have been described to date. In this paper, we report the first case of alopecia after a smack the nation. Okay, well, we all know that probably wasn't the first case, but it's the first one that finally made it into the reports. Although the significance of these skin reactions is not yet known, further studies will certainly clarify whether the development of alopecia or other forms of immune-mediated reactions could represent a positive prognostic factor regarding immune protection. So, this is what's going on, you guys. Now, let's get into some of this other stuff that we have today. The bald matrix is what we call this now. So thanks to the subscriber who sent this to me. I, I had no idea that there were studies out. I mean, this was, I guess, f you know, five months ago. I should have found this by now, but one of you found it. And so I'm grateful for that because now we know what the truth is. It's confirmed. The work is confirmed once again. Now, let's get into some of these other stories. Seems like every month they come out with a new VidCo19 symptom, don't they? And they seem to be getting more serious. Now we have our own, you know, we have our own personal beliefs about what this could be about. But according to the mainstream, they say it's VidCo19 causing it. Here's my question. Why did most of these side effects start happening after the smack scenes were launched? Uh, was it because they weren't happening? No, of course they were happening. It's because, uh, you know, usually when some, you know, something just seems to start out of nowhere, even though something else has been going on for a long time, it's usually because people don't want that information to come out. That's usually the case if we think critically and think realistically about how these things work. It's not that people weren't experiencing it. It wasn't just like one day uh, the, you know, Vidco flipped the switch and said, okay, open the floodgates of the side effects that's not how it works they were there all along it's just they weren't being reported and so here we are they're saying vidco 19 now causes diabetes in children now again we all have our you know theories about what is causing diabetes in children and many of us believe that it really probably has not much to do with what they're saying it does. But here we go. Some parents whose children contracted VidCo say that even months later, they were still feeling the effects. One mother who wished to be anonymous but said her healthy soccer playing 10 year old son had become mysteriously ill around Easter. Labored breathing. It was almost like he couldn't catch his breath. He was exhausted. He didn't act the same. He was really quiet. He wasn't himself. She spoke to a pediatrician. And they said the child was just experiencing a growth spurt. Nothing to worry about. But the teachers also expressed concerns. About his demeanor and brain fog. Then they realized it. They took him to the children's hospital in Atlanta. And found out through blood tests 
Look at this. The Scottish Rite Hospital. What? Might as well call this the Trump Hospital. Reveal the child had type 1 diabetes. Caused by Vidco-19. How do they know it was, you know? He, we were just in shock. You tell me it was my, possible that my son, that Vidco had done this to my son? Well, they blame everything on Vidco, don't they? Again, mysteriously, uh, these reports come, most of them, after the smack scene was launched. But there's no per there's no connection, right? The V rust can attack and kill cells of the pancreas. Causes insulin. So, it's weird though, because these things cross over, right? This is all about immune reaction, isn't it? And both cause it, both cause them an immune reaction. So, it, it muddies the waters. Who really knows? For a matter of fact, what is causing what? Who really knows? Now, here they go. Muddy the waters some more. Because officials are expected to decide on the new Vidco 19 smack scene design in early July. So basically a whole new generation of smack scenes is being planned as we speak as they get ready for the next wave. Now this is concerning because the technology is going to change a bit. Federal regulators are expected to decide on the new Vidco design. And they're going to allow uh, the companies to begin production for rollout this fall or winter. F to the D to the A chief said that the decision will likely come from them shortly after advisory committee meets about the versions of the next generation smack scenes that they're testing then they'll make uh, you know choices and decisions about which companies that they'll go ahead with so now it's time for the next generation of pharmaceutical companies to come up to bat and take their swing right so weird times we're living in you guys and you know what people will stand in line again Every single year, they will stand in line to feel protected, won't they? Wow, look at these people. Unbelievable. What's he doing with his hands? So, the booster seats and beyond. So, I'll put links to all this. I don't like to read all the way through these articles because they're, they're really long. I just like to give you guys the gist of what's going on. But I'll put links to all this so you guys can follow this for yourself or dig deeper if you'd like to see if there's anything else in these articles. Now, by now you guys have all heard about the baby formula shortage. Well, guess what's happening now? Because of the baby formula shortage, mothers are now starting to share breast milk. Hmm. wonder if that's why God gave them two. Look at this. Some people are probably making a business out of this. Let's read about this. Because this is, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this yet. Breast pump at the home of Margie Smith. Who was given thousands of ounces to other mothers. Uh, So, what would that be? That would be... Um, <laughs> I was going to make a joke, but I guess this isn't funny. Margie Smith has always produced much more breast milk than her children need. When her son was born three years ago, Smith, who pumps exclusively, was making more than 50 ounces of breast milk per day. Oh my gosh. Enough to feed twins, at least. With her 10-month-old daughter, she is producing less, but still more, than her baby can drink. Well, I guess if you got extra, you guess you could give it away. Uh, so Smith, 32, has donated breast milk she pumped for both of her babies, giving away roughly 3,500 ounces to families. She's found online. It's been nice that I'm doing this for my children, but I also I've been I've been able to help other little babies. She said her children each did brief stints in the neonatal intensive care unit, where they received some donor breast milk. So she feels as she's paying it forward in a way. Someone who was kind enough to donate so that my babies can have it. So I've always felt the need to give back and help another mom, another mother that's struggling. What? She works as an x-ray technician and lives in Elgin, Illinois. Ooh, might want to avoid that breast milk. Get lit up with some uh, 
some uh, microwaves. So, you know, this is just great. What are your guys' thoughts? I don't know how I feel about this. Let me go into the chat here and see how you guys feel about this. Milk from other mothers. And then we'll, fin <laughs> we'll finish this up. I mean, it's kind of weird, right? It's kind of weird. I mean, what? the one lady who's donating has to be an x-ray tech. Like, that's a little bit weird, I think. So, let's take a look and see what you guys think about donated breast milk. Huh. I mean, was it glowing when it came out? I don't know. And that poor kid with the mother producing all that milk. He probably had to wear, like, face gear to protect from getting squirted in the eye. I don't know. What do you guys think, of the, between, when we read between the headline, what do you think that this is really all about? Oh, maybe it's all about, oh, you know, she's an x-ray tech, so maybe it's about, you know, uh, frequencies, right? And, what, and what's really happening. I don't know. Radiated milk. No milk sharing. <laughs> you guys make some pretty funny jokes. Snorkel. <laughs> <laughs> that one made me laugh out loud. <laughs> the baby had to wear snorkeling gear. <laughs> uh, yeah, the world has gone crazy. It's it, it's just wow, really. Oh, spike spike protein can be transferred during breastfeeding. Hmm. I mean, you know, what do we always talk about? We say that breast milk is the best milk, isn't it? Because it's natural and it's got. Everything the child needs. But I don't know about breast milk from, from another mother. It's like brother from another mother, right? Yeah, it's always something, right? Will they test? Exactly, Shay. Will they test for drugs? I mean, you know, it's like with blood, you know, you can't, you can't just have any blood. It's got to be clean. <laughs> I want some for my coffee. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, um, interesting nonetheless. Let's continue finish reading this because let's see what's... This is just kind of weird. As a nationwide baby forming shortage continue to wear on new parents struggling to keep their babies fed, some have turned to informal breast milk sharing, practice that predates the current crisis by thousands of years. Human milk for human babies, a Facebook-based peer-to-peer -peer breast milk sharing platform i wouldn't do anything through facebook in terms of sharing breast milk i mean they've got so many scammers out there it's probably weirdos out there just going oh I'll just get me some breast milk i mean you know like this whole thing with will smith weren't they eating like baby food or something they were like living off of baby food see how all this is connected with the the shortage now of the of baby food and then Will Smith eating all the baby food. Him and his kids and family say they lost weight on it or something. It seems to all be coming full circle, doesn't it? Potential donors and recipients are joining higher numbers in, than before the shortage. Notice that there has been a particular increase in one-time donations from mothers who have never donated before. While parents use donor milk because they believe it is good for their babies and lactating mothers may donate out of sense of altruism, experts say the practice can come with serious risks. Oh, here we go. They discourage casual sharing, pointing to the potential for contamination as well as a chance that the milk could be irradiated. And I mean, that parents with the best of intentions will unwittingly expose their babies to harmful medications or drugs, which is what one of you mentioned in the chat. Informal breast milk sharing. IBMS might cause IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. The AAP recommends that babies be breastfed exclusively until they are about six months old and continue breastfeeding along with complementary foods until they are at least one year old. But the reality is that one quarter of babies in the U.S. are exclusively breastfed by the time they're six months old. Only 35% are still breastfed at the time that they turn one. So... Weird times, you guys. Weird times. Now, let's talk a little bit more about Will Smith, I Am Legend, and the zombie apocalypse. Because remember in that movie, 
The cancer cure was what caused the zombie apocalypse. Remember, it was Dr. Crippen in the opening segments of that film. And she made this discovery. She was all, you know, confident and, oh, we cured cancer. Well, it appears as though fiction has met reality. A brand new virus has, in fact, cured cancer. Now, here's the weird thing. The virus is called Vaccinia, of all names, right? Like a smack scene. Scientists have injected the first human patient with a new cancer-killing virus. The virus known as Vaccinia has been successful. Seen successful tests in animals. However, the true test is of its efficacy begins with its new clinical trial. So, it's here, you guys. Viruses that kill cancer. Wow. I mean, what could go wrong with that? <laughs> it's a genetically engineered virus that causes your own immune system to target the cancer cells. Hmm. Guess we're going to have to see. I mean, right now they've got smack scenes causing people to go bald. It's like the bald zombies in the movie. All right. Now, this story bugs me. Because here we are in the, in the midst of the massive amount of suffering that the middle class is enduring. Rising costs... Stagnant wages, and then we get stories like this. Now, it's not the waitress I'm upset at. Obviously, she's got a method to how she gets all these tips, right? And people are shallow enough to tip people like this thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. She was making, what was this, 10 grand a day doing, what do they call this, bottle service? Speaking of bottles, right? I mean, appropriate segue from the uh, whole breast mail thing. Anyway, so what I'm upset at is the people that give these tips, that are blowing their noses with $100 bills. And here we are, we can't even, they, here we are in America, people blowing their nose with $100 bills, and American Corporations and companies can't even pay a fair wage to bring the hardworking people out of poverty. There are people that work 40 hours a week. They should not be poor in a country like this. But yet, all these rich people have all this extra money to blow on $10,000 tips. Let's read this. Let me refresh this. See if there's a, a video here. Get rid of that. Go away. Go away. It's an ad. Sorry, guys. I don't have the sound on, so. So anyway, let's take a look at this. Bottle service waitress reveals how much money she makes in tips during a normal day. I'm in the wrong profession. So. What is this? Is this in here? Let me see this. Oh, that's another ad. Jeez. What's wrong with this? Bottle service waitress is going viral after sharing how much money and tips she can make from a single table. The insight comes courtesy of TikTok user named Nina, who works at a club in Scottsdale, Arizona. Nina frequently posts about her job, including one recent video that showed just how much she can make from a single check. Her clip is the latest in recent surge of viral TikToks from bars and restaurant workers. And in another popular post, a, ho a, Hooters, a Hooters waitress shared how much she makes in tips during a normal day in Waffle House and on and on and on. She got 6 million views. I'm not going to play this. I don't think I even can play it. But basically, um, she's called the Bottle Girl Vlog. She chronicles a regular day of work at the club. Nina shift that uh, shift that day seemingly started at 10 a.m. As the club was a poolside cabana for all day festivities. However, the end of Nina's video is what seemed to draw the most attention. As the day winds down, TikTok Talker shows two checks, one for $1,800 in tips and another for $3,000 in tips. 
It's unclear how much Nina gets to keep for herself. The bills seem to come from large parties that also paid for bottle service. So it's possible the club or the waitress split some portion of the tips. Now, I don't have anything against people getting tips, but this is crazy. And it, this is basically, well, you've got a bunch of rich people just blowing money while they can't claim that they can't pay a fair wage to their workers. Okay. I mean, at least have the courtesy and the couth to not throw it in everybody's faces if you are making all that money. I'm just mind blown that people have the money to pay $10,000 before the $3,000 tip. Wow. So anyway, that's what's going on with this. I thought I would share that with you guys just to show you how upside down the world is. Now... Here's the shrinking middle class. This is what we're dealing with here. America's shrinking middle class is barely keeping up. Shrinking over the last 50 years, you all know this because you're experiencing it. The share of aggregate household income held by the middle class has plunged since 1970. And it's all because of inflation and everything else. Not just inflation, it's rising rents, rising gas prices, and everything else. So, here are the statistics right here. Shrinking middle class. Now, let me go back into the chat because tomorrow we will start to break down the series The Man Who Fell to Earth. Now, The Man That Fell to Earth is a redo. Here's the series here, the TV series. Um, there was a novel and there was a 1976 film starving, star, starving. <laughs> a lot of Freudian slips today, right? Starring David Bowie. And uh, we actually took a look at that, or I took a look at the David Bowie film from the 1970s. There wasn't quite enough to do a full show on, so I don't think I reported on it, but I did screen most of that film. Here it is right here, The Man Who Fell to Earth. We might have mentioned it a couple times. David Bowie. Um, you know, he's got the eye, he had the eyes of two different colors. Um, all of that is depicted in the new series reboot. So I will be covering the series reboot because it was, had a lot of stuff in it. Uh, it's off the chain, you guys. It's about reptilians, fallen angels, and I'm already through the first couple of episodes. And I'll try to get you guys up to speed tomorrow before the weekend. Uh... But basically, it's about an alien reptilian that comes down to Earth to try to save his own planet. And then has to basically also try to help save Earth. But it is rife with fear, fear, fear about the end of our world. I mean, if you're somebody watching it and you're unawares and uninformed, you would believe that we are on the precipice of our entire planet imploding. And so there's lots of that going on, lots of fear. Okay, so just to prepare you for that, if it's something that you consider watching. But many of you have recommended that I watch this series, and I'm finally getting around to it. I think it released in like March, March or April. All right, let's go into the chat here and do a little Q&A with you guys. Okay, yes, yeah, sounds more like Satan fell from heaven. Absolutely. Now, uh, the cover story that we get for, I want to call him Billy Idol, but it's actually, uh, uh, why do I keep forgetting his name? David Bowie. The cover story that he has for having eyes of different colors is that he had some kind of accident. Like he got poked in the eye or something, or something like that. This is the cover story we've been given. Okay, But we talked about the spiritual aspects of the eyes and being different colors. And it's a, it's a hybridization thing. That's what it is. Signify some kind of hybridization. Now, there's different kinds of change in eye color. There's polychromia and heterochromia. Uh, one involves multiple colors in a single eye. And the other involves eyes of two different colors. One eye being one color, one eye being another. Now, you see this in highly hybridized animals like uh, Alaskan Huskies. They, they'll often have eyes of different colors. 
So this is about hybridization. That's sp spiritually what it's about. Okay, regardless of how his eyes got that way, uh, that's what it is spiritually. Now, how do we know that? Well, you see it over and over and over again in film. You guys will notice it. There are certain films and TV series, and they'll oftentimes have a person with eyes of two different colors. If you look closely, you can see it. There are popular actors and actresses with eyes of different colors, and they put them in these roles that reinforce this spiritual aspect to this, this hybridization, mixing of the two seed lines, okay? It doesn't mean that everybody that has eyes of different color are bad or satanic or anything like that. I have hybridized eyes as well. Mine are two colors within the same eye. So I have gold in the center of my eye around my pupil and then green around the edge. So, you know, th these things are very real. They're very real. So, those are my thoughts on David Bowie and the eye color. All right, let's go back into here. All right. Lots of bugs out there. Yeah, have you guys been seeing a lot of ants lately? I found an ant in the bathtub. The thing was massive. It was like the size of, like, my pinky. Well, not that quite that big, but the thickness of it. And... When I went to try to smash this ant, uh, it wouldn't smash. It was like made out of like glass or something. So I had to like press really hard. Kind of reminded me of like a tick, like how you can't smash a tick. Or this, well, this massive ant, I could not smash it. And when I finally did, it made this like a popping sound, like popped. I was like, where did this ant come from? Now, there's an odd, uh, I gotta speak quietly here because the sound travels. There's a lady that lives downstairs, and she is apparently into, like, plants and bugs. So, I don't know. Maybe one crawled up through the ventilation system. Who knows? But I'm going to be out of here in a week, so. Whew, man, crazy times, you guys. Crazy times. All right. Are you guys seeing more bugs than usual? Hmm, lots of ticks there. Super ant. Now, I'm not used to this because in California, where I grew up, we had black ants. You, they smashed relatively easily. But here in the Northeast, these ants are like made out of something different. They're like glass or something. Maybe it was... No, that's my conspiracy mind. <laughs> Maybe it was some kind of drone. <laughs> An ant drone crawling around doing surveillance inside of my apartment. No, it wasn't that. But it's funny to laugh about it, right? You've noticed that too about ants. See, so I'm not crazy. This, These ants are like, man. I, I got him with the tissue. I pinched him. I'm like, okay, it's over. And I opened the tissue and he crawled out. I'm like, whoa. And I smashed it. I went, I had to smash him like four times. Finally, I put him up against the toilet and then I pushed really hard and then I heard a, like, a, like he popped or something. I was like, oh boy. Here we go. Body armor for ants. Let me zoom this out a little bit. This is going by really fast. Okay. Lots of bugs in Michigan. Yeah, it'll be a pretty easy move. Um, I went and picked up a trailer. Drove up to upstate New York. It was the first time I'd ever been there. Guy had a trailer for sale. And uh, just, you know, one of those lawn trailers. You can put lawn equipment on. I didn't want to go crazy. But the cost to rent a U-Haul was like $600 for a U-Haul trailer. Just a simple open trailer. I'm like, why am I going to spend $600 on a U-Haul trailer that I just have to return when I can buy one for almost the same price and keep it? Which I'll need out there in Arkansas because I plan on getting my hands dirty and, you know... Working on the farm. And uh, so I went over there. And I found this trailer. The guys were really, really nice. These guys, Now these guys were the first Mexican guys I'd run into in the last four years that I've been here in Connecticut. And I go, what are you, what are you guys doing out here? And they're like, oh, we, we're here working farms and doing uh, yard work. 
Now in California, where I grew up, I grew up around lots and lots of Mexican people. In fact, my identity that I kind of identified with in my teenage years was like more Mexican because all my friends were Mexican. And I was like, what are you guys doing? They were in the middle of nowhere, literally. I'm like, is this a setup? Is this some kind of Illuminati hit setup? These guys going to take me out when I drive up and steal my money? I wasn't sure. But there they were. Really nice guys. And they're like, just, you know, just drive it across the lawn there. Don't worry about trying to back it out of the driveway. So got a good deal on a trailer. And then I got out my black spray can and, you know, did some improvements to the trailer. Make sure it's uh, road worthy, you know. And so load it up and be on the way. So what else is going on here? Oh, my son loves Mexican food. When he first got here, he was like, Dad, I I'm having withdrawals from Mexican food. Because he grew up on Mexican food, of course. Um, his mother was uh, Guatemalan, so lots of Mexican food, Guatemalan food, and he loves it. And so, uh, you know, we got out here, and he's like, Dad, I need Mexican food. Real Mexican food. Refried beans. Homemade tortillas. I'm like, I don't know, son. And so we found it. We found him some Mexican food. So the first thing that uh, he wanted to know to the place where we're moving is, do they have Mexican restaurants? So I looked it up, and there's like six or seven Mexican restaurants in one street. Now, here's the funny thing. The place we're moving to, I'm not going to tell you exactly where we're moving to, but the place we're moving to just so happens to have in close proximity to it the headquarters of the white hats and so but you know this is why i tell you guys all of that is behind us it's how you act as an individual okay and he he knows it he's like son he goes dad um i looked up the place we're moving to and it says it's the headquarters <laughs> i go yeah son but don't worry about it everything's gonna be fine Okay, everything's gonna be fine. He's like, I know, Dad. He goes, I'm like you. He goes, it's how you, how you treat people, how you talk to people, and you don't have to worry about all that stuff. And the proof's in the pudding. You know, it's supposed to be supposedly the most racist place in America, but yet there's six or eight Mexican food restaurants on one street. So um, obviously, it can't be that racist, can it? And there's just as many Japanese and Chinese food places as well, which is uh, he loves that kind of food as well. So, anyway. All right, what else do we have here? Great questions, you guys. I enjoy sharing with you. You know, we don't do this enough. We don't take a break enough and have some fun sometimes. I know things get awful serious here sometimes. But hopefully you understand that we have to do that. We have to expose all that stuff to keep us all informed, right? So that we can get out of the way of some of these uh, devices of the enemy. But then it's okay to have a little fun too sometimes, isn't it? Yes, it is. So. Okay. Yes, they sensationalize it. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Cow tongue and cheek. Yeah. Lengua tacos. Yeah, that's... I wasn't a big fan of the lengua tacos. I'm more like a carne asada guy. Or uh, chicken. Chicken tacos. So. Yeah. You guys, the only way we're going to conquer, uh, you know, ignorant attitudes is to meet it head on, face on. Prove to people that they have nothing to worry about. People are just people. It doesn't matter what color you are. And the more people of a diversity that can show and prove that without you know attacking people or making assumptions about people's behavior, um, that's how we get past this. This is how we stick it to the controllers who are trying to brainwash us all into believing that there's a race problem. You go right into the heart of it. And you show people, look, there's nothing to worry about. 
we're just people just like you we're gonna treat you know the things that we rent from you with respect and dignity we're not gonna trash the place we're not gonna throw huge parties we're not gonna act weird we're not gonna do anything we're gonna we're just normal people like you and that's how you overcome you know this top-down uh, racism they, they keep trying to push in our country they keep stoking the flames they're the ones stoking the flames they're the ones that keep headlining every single little instance that happens and make it a thing they're the ones doing it not you and i not people like us so anyway i love you guys and uh i guess i'll see you tomorrow and we'll be covering the man who fell to earth Take care and be safe, everybody. Thanks for coming.